So let's also get you the latest updates of what's playing out in Ukraine. Through the weekend here on India Today, we've been getting you all the images of the conflict, of the violence that's broken out on the streets of Ukraine. Ukraine is agreeing now to peace talks. It's a welcoming sign, but the Russian offensive right now is far from over. Russian missile attacks intensified on Sunday with, in fact, the Russian forces uh, uh, destroying Ukraine's oil supplies. That's become their focus right now. The battle for Kharkiv ended in disappointment for Russia, with Ukrainians retaking the city after a fierce battle on the streets. Russians were also not able to make strides into the capital city of Kiev. Ukraine President Zelensky has said the United Nations uh, must strip Russia of its Security Council vote. Remember, Russia is a permanent member of the UNSC. Ukraine is also rallying countries to go ahead and condemn Russia's unprovoked actions on its sovereign soil. Ukraine has also submitted an application against Russia to the International Court of Justice to order Russia to seize all military activity in the country. The United Nations, meanwhile, has called an emergency meet to discuss all that's happened in Ukraine. So the UN also maintaining that we're tracking closely what's happening. Now, if Russia thought that taking over Ukraine is going to be a walk in the park, a piece of cake, it's not been. And Ukraine has been putting up a fight back for the ages. Ukraine over the weekend has claimed a massive strategic gain. The regional governor says that the Ukrainian army has retaken control of the city of Kharkiv by expelling Russian troops. And this is from the second largest city in the country. But the gain has been made after multiple attacks by Russia and an intense fight back. Here's a report on how the Russians have ravaged the city of Kharkiv. Ukraine's second largest city. Witnessing full force of war, destruction and havoc. As invading Russian troops force their way in with artillery units, tanks, gunfire rented there with loud explosions as shells landed all over. Citizens picked up weapons in the city, which is located about 20 kilometers south of Russian border. Closest target for the Russian troops compared to any other city in Ukraine. Devastating blasts were reported in gas pipelines as Russian army targeted the energy supplies, choking off fuel to the local population. Massive fire raged for hours as the pipelines exploded after being struck. Heavy Russian tanks and armoured vehicles took over the streets. Fighting pitched battle with Ukrainian troops aided by civilian population. Videos of smashed Russian tanks went viral on social media in the ferocious counter. Several of the invaders' military equipment also suffered heavy damages. The latest round of fighting came after missiles and bombs rained down on the besieged city in a night of heavy bombardment. With the world abandoning them, can outgunned and outmanned Ukrainians hold back the Russian army for long? Bureau Report, India Today. Now amid air raids, missile explosions and tanks firing shells, the common Ukrainian, the citizen, is gearing up to battle Russia forces. Civilians in Kyiv's territorial defense center are putting up their last stand. You've got youngsters, techies, even teenagers arming themselves for resistance, saying we're going to give it back to Russia. Go, 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 go
Civilians in Kiev's territorial defense center putting up their last stand. Youngsters, techies, and even teens arming themselves, donning combat fatigue, ready to battle the invading force. Telling India today with boyish enthusiasm that they are ready and raring. Slava Ukraine. Yes, they are ready to fight. You see there, he's a young guy. He probably is very, very young. He's probably 17, 18, but they're all ready to fight for the country. Amid air raids, missile attacks, and tanks firing shells. The common Ukrainian is resisting hard. Olga, can you are you also ready to fight for Ukraine? Yes, I'm ready to help to fight. At least I can sort out the maps. Alex, uh, what is your profession normally? <laughs> I'm working in public relations. And right in, now, in and, and, and right now, you see, he's holding <laughs> holding a real Kalashnikov, a public relations officer, because his country needs it. If I won't make it, no one make it. So I'm here to protect my wife, my family, myself, my country from the Russian invasion. I'm a, an IT guy. Actually, I'm not a military guy, but I also have the gun and uh, all of my friends, they got, uh, they come to government and government uh, 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 take them to the militia and give guns. So we will fight for our land and we will kill all, our, all Russians. It is not often that the world sees civilians in full combat gear. But the war has come home to one of the most populous and thriving European cities. Sparking a full-fledged urban warfare, bordering in guerrilla tactics by residents, many of whom are heading home from overseas to join the war. I want to join the army. I want to fight, I want to live on my earth, in my Ukraine. And I don't want to die our soldiers, our Ukrainian soldiers. They are very brave. And we all, all the Ukrainians, women, pray for them. Russia knows the pitfalls. Hence, it is sending its troops, disguised as Ukrainian soldiers, to crush the resistance. But many of them have been nabbed. The urban warfare now threatens to prolong the war and make it even bloodier. With Rajesh Pawar in Kiev, Bureau Report, India Today. There have been several images and videos that have emerged of the conflict in Ukraine, of the war. But what we're about to show you is perhaps the most fearsome video yet of Russia's invasion attack in Ukraine. This image of a massive tank crushing down a car on a Kiev street has gone now super viral, uh, turning world opinion bitterly anti-Russian as well. Because videos like this has led to people questioning what kind of atrocities are happening on the ground. These troops are now being seen as perpetrators of war crimes. Perhaps the most viral image of Russia's invasion. A hair-raising video of a mighty armoured vehicle pulverising a civilian car on a deserted Ukraine street, crushing it completely. Mangled metal, nearly nothing left. The armoured vehicle swerves along this road, crushing the car along with its driver, with no apparent provocation. Filmed by locals from a nearby high-rise, the person filming can be heard gasping in horror and wailing in fear in the background as the chilling incident is recorded. While it took a miracle for the elderly driver to survive, locals had to struggle hard to extricate him from the wreckage. 
ramming and pulling the car doors that got jammed to bring out the aged driver who looked remarkably calm. The video has instantly gone on to become one of the biggest talking points across the world. Instantly hardening millions of people's stance against Russian aggression, turning the perception of the war on its head, resulting in a groundswell of support and sympathy for Ukraine fighting a behemoth of a superpower. The video of naked aggression against a defenseless civilian has garnered sympathy and support for the nation, showing Russian troops as active perpetrators of war crimes and the implementers of Putin's ruthless will, giving credence to Kyiv's claims that a superpower is resorting to genocide bids and doesn't care about civilians. <gasps> will the video prove to be a turning point in Putin's invasion of Ukraine. Bureau Report, India Today. And in a development that came in yesterday gave us a hint of hope of all of this conflict settling down. Ukraine has agreed to hold talks with Russia. It's going to be happening at the Belarus border. Ukraine has agreed for dialogue with Russia amid Putin's nuclear alert as well. The Ukrainian delegation would meet to the Russian delegation without any preconditions. And this will happen at the Ukrainian-Belarusian border near the Pripyat River. The area is in fact located right across the frontier between Belarus and Ukraine. And the waterway then runs down to the Chernobyl exclusion zone in the south. Now, the agreement for talks is the result of a phone call conversation between President Zelensky and the Belarus president, Alexander Lukashenko. The development comes after Kremlin had earlier sent a delegation to Belarus, saying it was ready to start peace negotiations with the Ukraine leadership. This was in Gomel City. Ukraine's President Zelensky had rejected this offer from Moscow, saying that anyone who's invading us, we will not have any sort of dialogue with. The Ukrainian president said he's willing to try talks with Russia now, but is still sceptical of them and what will happen. The Belarusian president has taken responsibility for ensuring all aviation forces in the area are grounded during the Ukrainian delegation's travel, talks and subsequent return. Now, we've also here on India Today focused very, very crucially on what's happening with regards to the evacuation of Indian nationals. Many of them are sheltered in bunkers. They're jostling at the border to get out and waiting to be airlifted. It is, of course, a long and arduous journey back home for thousands of Indians who are still stranded in Ukraine. Several students who managed to cross the border to Poland alleged harassment at the border as well. Many others are still awaiting help at the Bucharest airport. There's been relief in sight as well because the government has been closely tracking all that's happening. Following the footsteps of Air India, Indigo is now set to join Operation Ganga, operating flights from Delhi to Istanbul to Budapest uh, and taking that particular route to help people come back. Two Indigo flights will arrive from Bucharest and from Budapest on March 1st. Three Air India flights will return on March 1st uh, to March 3rd during that duration from Bucharest again. On Sunday, an evacuation flight landed in Delhi from Bucharest. 198 passengers were on board. There are others who are still waiting at this point for a safe flight home. But rest assured, the government is working round the clock to ensure that every single Indian national is brought out. Now, so far, under Op Ganga, a thousand of our citizens uh, have been flown out to Romania and Hungary. And another thousand um, have been evacuated uh, from Ukraine, Ukraine through the land routes. In other words, thousands of our students have crossed over from Ukraine into, um, into zones uh, which are uh, uh, conducive for their evacuation by air back to India. Uh, uh, flights for these evacuees are being organized. We were taken to the bus. The Indian, Indian Embassy has provided all the services provide from the first till the end. And we have reached the house. We have taken the bus from the hostel. Then we have taken the bus from Romania border. We have taken the Indian Embassy. Then we have taken the auto penny to the airport. We have taken the air India to evacuate from Mumbai. Tak.